I'm going to pause the recording. All right, so here we go. We are here today for the uh, second part of our school onboarding uh, session and a little refresher for oh, microphone near mouth probably helps forgot about that forgive me. Um, so school onboarding refresher uh, for those who have been with uh, their school library and part of YRL for a while, um, definitely onboarding for those who are brand new and uh, uh, especially over the last, oh, hi, Danica. Um, this is uh, also really great for people who have joined us just in the last two years. So I guess technically you're not new anymore, but in many ways, even though we may have done some onboarding with you, um, this is always a, a good refresher because with the uh, chaos over the last couple of years that has, um, I don't know, made everything a little bit more challenging. It's easy to forget um, things. I am an expert at forgetting things because of the stress. So <laughs> there you go. Okay, so today I am going to be talking about um, the other side of how we support schools versus what Jessica was talking about yesterday. So this is more uh, the collection development element. And I'm just going to start to show my screen. Oh, goodness. I'm going to show my screen here, I think. I hope. Maybe not. Forgive me. Working out the kinks. So uh, if you go to share screen. Yeah, just my toolbar disappeared again. That's what's. Ah. As soon as I hit slideshow. And we had an issue. It hides behind your slideshow. And I just can't seem to make it go away. Goodness gracious. Okay. Now I don't know how to make that stop. I, um. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh, save. Okay. Sorry. Hello again. <laughs> you probably can't see that anymore. Um, I think I'm going to have to maybe do this. I'm going to have to move it over. Goodness gracious, forgive me, everyone. Having some issues. All right, so I'm going to try share screen. And I want this. Okay, and you're just going to see yourself for a second, but I'm hoping, hope, hoping, hoping, God willing, that this is going to work. So say a little prayer for me. Can you see it? Oh, <gasps> yeah. There it oh, is. Thank the Lord. Okay. So now you can um, go to display. Oh. So you are displaying the presenter. So the presenter view. Oh, shoot. See, and it so was... that's okay. Up on display settings, maybe? Or are you just sharing the wrong screen? Display swap presenter. Try view. that. Is there that you go. Perfect. All right. Thank you, you for it. your assistance in this matter, Jessica Nock. You're welcome. All right. <laughs> All right. So back, back to business. Um, so part two, we're talking about collection development and some acquisitions. So basically uh, how you can obtain new materials and how you're going to do that. I'm going to move on to the next slide. Oh, goodness gracious. All right. So um, something I'm going to talk about um, that we maybe haven't gone into um, thoroughly enough in the past because questions tend to come up throughout the year, which of course is great. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, we welcome questions, um, but maybe did, didn't explain it um, well enough in the past. So, and it can be a little confusing, especially if it's something that you're very new to. So with, um, uh, within this regional consortium, uh, if you are part of YRL, then any of the monies that the provincial government has allotted to um, your school based on the number of students that you have. And I'm not going to get into the into the nitty gritty details as to like how much money per student, um, but basically you are given an allotment or a, a sum of money that you can spend on library materials. So books for your library. And what we do is we're kind of like a bank or the middleman in a way. We kind of manage those funds for you. So 
when you, in a nutshell, when you place an order, for example, regardless of how you do that, and we're going to talk about that a little bit more, um, we're the ones that, that kind of manage that money and that we are the go between between the vendors that you're going to be ordering the materials from. And we just help uh, to facilitate um, the spending of, of that allotment um, from, throughout that calendar year. It is, um, it does start at the beginning of the calendar year, the money that you're given for, for uh, so it, even though it doesn't necessarily coincide with the school year, so it would be January 1st of the new year that the new money would go in for that year, so to speak. So it, it doesn't run consecutively with your two semesters, basically. I hope that makes sense. Um, but I guess our hope is that we want to encourage you to spend that allotment before uh, the end of that calendar year. So granted, money that is left over will carry over to the following year. And uh, it, it's certainly not you know, it's not like the allotment police are going to come after you if you don't spend it out before the year. Um, but it, 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 uh, it is, I don't even know how to explain this, Jessica, not in our best interest. How can I say? We can carry it over at like small amounts, but we don't want to carry over total amounts from year to year. Um, it becomes kind of a, a, a definitely an accounting issue. So in um, other words, spend your money because we yeah. want to make sure that you yeah. have awesome materials on yeah. your shelf. And we yeah. are happy to help you yeah. spend that money. <laughs> so, so basically that's what your allotment is. So sometimes we'll, we generally call them funds. Some um, people uh, call them accounts. Um, but that's basically that sum of money that you have for that calendar year. If you are unsure what that amount is, um, you are always welcome to reach out to us at AskYRL um, at yrl.ab.ca and ask us anytime. Um, we can uh, look in uh, our system, in our ILS, to tell you what that amount is. But as uh, I explain our collection development tool to you in a bit, you can also check it there yourself um, once you actually have a, a login. And some of you may already have a login for CCD and some may not, but we'll talk about that in a bit. The other fund, um, which I know, again, can be kind of confusing calling it a fund when it's not really like, you know, another, like you have your checking account, your savings account, so to speak. So there's an allotment and your bill direct. And what bill direct is, is... Let's say you've already spent out your allotment for the year, but you still wanted to buy additional materials. You have two options for that. You can either purchase them by Bill Direct, which just means that it's still um, submitted an order to us in a variety of different ways, which again, we're going to talk about more at length in a, in a couple of minutes. Um, but you would request that you wanted to pay for that by Bill Direct. So we wouldn't be taking any money out of your allotment, whether you had money still in that fund or not. But basically, you would receive an invoice along with those purchase materials when they're actually shipped to you. And then you would send um, YRL HQ a check for that amount. And uh, uh, that would that pay for that batch of materials. The second option um, is additional allotment. And that is basically, again, a case of you've maybe spent out your allotment. You don't have any money left, but you wanted to buy additional materials. Again, you would submit your order as per usual, but you would indicate to us that you wanted to, to use additional allotment. And that means you would send in um, money to us here at HQ. And again, we would put it in an account for you. And then you could continue purchasing materials with that money, with your additional allotment. So let's say you knew that there was going to be another $500 worth of books that you wanted to buy. Um, then you would send us a check for $500 and we would just take uh, the money from those purchase materials out of that. So I hope that makes sense. Please feel free if there are any questions, you can just add them to the chat feature because it seems that our Q&A feature is missing, which is fine. Um, and Jessica and I will, will catch any of your questions. We'll answer as we go. All right, so moving on, if that all seems to make sense to everybody, I'm gonna move on to that CCD coordinated collection development tool. So I'm, I'm not sure how many of you already have a CCD login. Now, this is something that um, you will need us to set up for you. So if it is uh, something that you do not currently have a login for, and it's something that you would be interested in using, please contact us again at askyrl uh, at yrl.ab.ca, and we will get one set up for you, and then we'll let you know what it is, 
and then you can you can start shopping. So I'm just going to kind of give you a, a basic rundown of um, what that's going to look like. So now, heavens to Betsy, this might be risky, forgive me. I have to go online. Here we go. Um, now, Jessica, can you see CCD? It's looking good. <gasps> yes. Yay. Yep. The gods are looking it. down upon me favorably. Okay. So this is CCD. This is obviously uh, one step beyond the login page, but this is essentially what you're going to be looking at, except for um, because I uh, do some acquisitions work, I can see everybody's funds. So you're not going to see everybody's funds. You're just going to see yours. So let's pretend for funsies that we are, most of the schools are down at the bottom here. So we're going to pretend that we are, do, 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 do. we're going to be Elmer Elson. And so this is what you would see, excuse me, at the, uh, at the bottom of your screen, ignoring all of this, because you won't see that, but you will see your school. And that's what on CCD we refer to uh, as your fund is just your school name. Um, if you had anything on order right here, it would actually show what that balance was on or currently on order and what your remaining balance is. So we currently, let's say we're, we're Elmer Elson Elementary School, we have $106.53 to spend. So I'm just going to go back up to the top quickly. You wouldn't have to scroll all the way back up here because this would be all up here. Now I just wanted to explain this a little bit. So um, there's some terminology here that can be really confusing. So again, what uh, is, is termed as fund is just going to be um, the name of your school. So obviously this is in this practice uh, example is Elmer Elson's. Um, so it would actually say Elmer Elson right here. The balance would say, um, if it was at the top of the screen, like you would see, it would say 106.53. Now pending is anything that again is currently on order. And that would be orders that were placed through CCD specifically. So let's say you had bought $25.67 worth of books that were still currently on order with the vendor. That would be showing here in the minus pending column, as well as the encumbered items. So what encumbered items or encumbered monies is, is basically um, money that is attached to materials that are still on order. They have uh, not, that order has not been fulfilled yet by the vendor. So it has not been pulled from their, from their shelf in their warehouse and it has not been shipped or invoiced yet. So it's still kind of like money that is floating because what happens is, is just because you've ordered a title doesn't always necessarily guarantee with 100% certainty that you're going to receive that book. Um, it is an order, it depends on its availability. Uh, sometimes it can be uh, a book that's available in ULS's warehouse in Calgary, for example, and it's something that will be picked and shipped right away. But it also could be a situation of that they don't have it on their, on their shelf in their warehouse because, of course, it can't contain every book they have in their catalog. So they might have to order a copy from the publisher. Um, but it turns out the publisher doesn't have any in stock. So it either might take a while until they do a reprint um, or they're not planning on doing any reprinting. So then we find out that actually they can't fulfill that order for that specific title. And what happens is, is, is that money is, um, it's not taken out of your allotment. Let's say you, know, you chose your allotment as the fund to pay for that particular order. Um, it's not coming out of that allotment until it's actually shipped to us and added to an invoice from the vendor to us. So, so it's just, again, it's just kind of like, floating willy-nilly a little while, for a little while until something really definitive like that happens to it. If at the end of the year or over a 90-day period that um, request has not been fulfilled, it often gets cancelled. So, and in, in many cases when we catch it uh, and the vendor has cancelled that title because it's gone over a 90-day period or it is no longer being published, we will let you know. So, and it will disappear from the encumbered items column. And then again, uh, um, uh, what you would do at, just to begin, if you've signed in, you've chosen your fund. So again, we've, we've chosen the allotment fund and you can go to selection list to do a little shopping. So from here, uh, there's a couple of different ways that you can go. So 
The beauty of CCD is there's always, these are all selection lists that you can choose from. So there's the title, a little summary of, of what this list is made up of. If there's a category, sometimes there is, sometimes there isn't. So sometimes it'll be juvenile, children, graphic novels, et cetera. Now, this is a really important column is the discount column. Now, if you see in some cases, there's nothing here but a hyphen. And all that means is that in this particular list as it was compiled through the vendor site before it was uploaded into this particular tool is that there was multiple discounts present. So for us to just choose one discount specifically for this list, um, really wouldn't be representative of, of the wide variety of discounts that were available when it was uh, put together on the vendor website. So we've just left it at zero, um, which means that that uh, order could actually be submitted to the vendor with zero discounts, but those discounts, whatever they were, uh, will be applied when, again, the material is pulled from the shelf, shipped and invoiced, and those discounts will be applied at that time. So it can be a little deceiving sometimes. You might think, oh, I thought that that order was going to be around like $65, but it's actually, you know, um, 98. It's just because the, the discounts haven't been applied to it yet in a case like this from this cart. It shows you when the um, uh, this list will actually expire and when these items on this site will no longer be available, how many items there are, and then you can actually view the items here or you can click on the title itself. Now, there's a couple of really important notes to make with CCD. One, um, really hard to mess anything up on this site. Don't be, um, don't feel, you know, intimidated or, or concerned in any way that, you know, it's new. I don't know if I want to work with this because I might end up messing up our funds. Um, this is not actually connected to our ILS. We use Polaris and, um, or ACPAC, which is kind of our accounting um, uh, program. So, the nice thing is, is that if, if worse came to worse and you added something to an order and even submitted it um, and went, oh, heavens, that's not the one that I, I wanted to order, or I meant to take those two titles out, you could always just email us um, right away and just let us know, hey, I just submitted that order. Um, I actually didn't want those two titles. Can you take them out? And then we can take them out. There's there's really no um you know, horrible worst case scenario with CCD. It's very, very easy to use and uh, pretty hard to, to mess up. So, so have fun with it and uh, go shopping. So the other really, really thing to, or really important thing to mention is that um, the only titles that are available on CCD to order are the ones that are included in these selection lists. So if you were looking for something else entirely, um, and you looked in this search and sort um, search feature or in item search up here and it, nothing comes up. It's because it's not currently included in a selection list on CCD. So that just means that this is also not connected to the vendor website. These are just lists that I've basically put together in a cart from ULS. I've upload, uploaded them separately into CCD so that you only have to go to one spot to shop if you want. You don't have to go to two or three different vendor websites. So it's just basically a convenience, but not everything um, that ULS carries is in this tool. So important to know if there was something separate that you were looking for, you could either go to ULS, which I'm gonna show um, in a couple of minutes, and you could see if you could locate it there. Uh, or your other alternative is to skip that entirely. And you are always welcome to just email us again at askyrl at yrl.ab.ca and just give us the information in the body of an email. You know, it's really as simple as, as uh, letting us know the author, the title, preferably what format you would like it in. Would you like it in hardcover or would you like it in softcover? There can be a pretty substantial price difference between the two, um, but especially in a school library, you might want the hardcover and to absorb that cost because the wear and tear is going to, you know, kind of uh, um, preserve the, the integrity of, of the material for a much longer time than a soft cover would, but maybe your budget doesn't allow for, you want more bang for your buck, so you want to go for soft cover. Um, we can always look to see what is available and we will let you know. I generally will always give you a quote in advance of actually submitting any um, orders as well. So if you've requested three titles, I'll check them out on ULS and then I'll send you a quick email and say, this is what I found, is this okay? Um, and that's all you really need to do. So if you wanted to forego using ULS entirely um, or even quite frankly, CCD, that is totally 
an alternative option. You are not obligated to use either of those tools whatsoever. We are here to help you um, spend out that allotment to get great material for your collections. And as Jessica had mentioned yesterday, um, that's again, kind of where our expertise lies is helping you figure out if you're really unsure um, what, what to buy, whether it's curriculum based, whether it's um, specific to an age group, um, you know, again, grade eight boys, you know, maybe you just, you need some nonfiction material for grade eight boys or some fiction um, for some reluctant readers or something along those lines, we can help you compile um, a list of titles. Um, see what you think, you can vet it. And then if you're, you know, two thumbs up, we can uh, basically submit it for you to the vendor and get it to you as fast as we can. So that is, is uh, really kind of the basis of CCD, super easy to use, one-stop shop, can't mess it up. Um, and you're filling a cart just like you would like on Chapters or Amazon. And it's really as easy as this. So uh, if let's say I wanted to add this a deadly education to my cart. So I'm just going to add quantity one. You can see here it's $23. Again, that is not reflective of any discounts that might be present because this was a cart that did not indicate what the discount was. So I'm just going to add that to my cart. Now, again, if I wanted to remove it, simply hit the remove button. Nice and easy peasy. Now, the really neat thing about this tool is that it picks up uh, whether this particular title in this particular format, which is trade paperback, is available in, let's say, your own collection or if there's already copies within track. So if it was something that you were really unsure on, on getting, um, and you can see that, you know what, there's already a whole bunch of other copies in track, or we already have a copy. Oh, whoops, I forgot. I didn't even know. Um, it kind of saves you from having to make that. And if you hover over it, you can just kind of see there's five in our branches. So I have a question, Laura, actually. Yes. It, does this actually show what's in the school library collections? Um, it it well, doesn't. For, for I, I, this one specifically, it's saying five in your branches. So being that Elmer Elson is part of- Gotcha. Yeah, so I'm assuming it, it it's going to be the uh, public branches. Okay not the school necessarily, very oh. good question. Um, and, but then beyond, you can see that there's 14 in track. So if, if there already seemed to be a lot of, of copies available um, and you just didn't want to take part of your allotment to spend on that particular title because there's already a lot of copies in track already, that's when you would take advantage of curriculum support if you wanted to. Again, that's, that's a, it's a great option. You could contact us and say, hey, can I get a copy of a lesson in vengeance? Um, one of our kids wants to read it. I don't want to buy it for our collection. You don't even have to give us all this backstory. Sorry. You can just say, I want this title. <laughs> we will see if we can find it. But that would be kind of the reasoning behind it. But again, it's maybe something that, you know, maybe the, the you know, the um, seniors in your high school are all requesting and it would be well worth getting your very own copy. So whereas you can see this one, Ace of Spades, for example, um, there are currently no copies of the audiobook, the unabridged CD audiobook, currently in track or in any of your libraries. So um, you might think, hey, I've had kids request that. I'm definitely going to get our own copy. So little things to look for. Now, let's say I've already um, added a couple of things to my cart and I'm all ready. I'm all done. I'm going to view my order at the bottom here. And yep. I can confirm that is what I wanted to buy. Now, again, if there was any turning back and you're like, oh, darn it, I didn't want the trade paperback. I wanted the hardcover. I could always remove it, go back and, and re-add. But if I'm happy with this, it's really just a case of clicking submit order. And from here, you can see, again, what my fund is. If you had, if your, let's say your um, uh, uh, accounting or school division or um, whomever required a PO number for your purchase orders, this is where you would add what you want this purchase order to be under your, your PO number. You can let us know there. And notes, if there was anything you wanted us to know here that, um, let's say it's a novel study and you wanted multiple, multiple copies. So you've got a teacher that has requested, we need 20 copies of this particular title, Ace of Spades, um, and that in that case, it's not actually going to be in the library. It's going to be a classroom set, and you don't need any processing, which we're also going to talk a little bit about um, as well, very briefly. But basically, processing is printing and adding a spine label, um, uh, 
adding a barcode, a track barcode to it, um, that kind of thing. So it's that extra step. So it's basically, if it's just going to be a classroom novel set, then we can forego all of that. And as soon as the material comes in, we basically pay the invoice and we ship it off to you. So that's where you would just say, no processing, please. It's really that, that easy. In my case, however, I don't want my colleagues to submit this um, order. So I'm just going to say, this is just a test. Please ignore. Thanks. <laughs> And then really, once you've completed these couple of fields and you're happy with everything, submit order. Submit, there's lots of chances to of course turn back if you need to. And um, what's gonna happen is you're gonna receive an email um, as is the acquisitions team here at YRL. And then they will basically take the mark records from that order here in CCD, import them into our ILS and then they, they submit that to the vendor. And then hopefully lickety split, if the materials are readily available, they will be shipped to us processed if there's processing needed and then shipped to you. So that's pretty much CCD in a nutshell. I hope I've covered everything. Do you, can you think of anything I might've missed there, Jessica? You, you might actually get to this at some point, okay. but how, how do all these libraries get the MARC records to add to their own ILSs? So if you're covering oh, that. Oh, good question. Oh boy. Yeah. Okay. So what happens when um, we get to the very end stage? So the materials come in, we've cataloged it, we've processed it, it's going into bins and it's going to be shipped. Um, our uh, amazing CERC uh, staff, sorry, I had a cat hair in my eye, it's inevitable all the time. Um, basically what happens is our CERC team will send uh, an email, we'll actually have a meeting weekly with our CERC staff to say, hey, what school stuff is going out? Is it new? Is it process only? And then once um, I've been given a heads up, then whatever mark records are um, attached to any of those materials, particularly new materials, for example, uh, a report is run, they're generated, they're sent to me, and then depending on which school division you're, you're from, um, I will either send them directly to you so that you can, as an attachment, so you can upload them into your ILS, or I send them to your school division so that they can um, import them into your into your catalog. So so that's so you really don't have to do anything, which is um, outside of you know maybe a, a quick uploading. But beyond that, you don't have to obtain them from anywhere else. We will provide them for you. That's all part of the part of the partnership as well. All right. So moving on to I just have to lower this for a second. Whoop. Now we're going to talk about uh, what I had mentioned previously, which is ULS, which stands for United Library Services, as you can see. And I've already logged in, but I'm just going to log out for a quick second, because um, if you do not currently have a login for this site, you can create it yourself. You don't need to go through us to, to get a login. Uh, you do not need to create technically like an account like you do with some of our vendors where they actually do a credit check and set up financials and that kind of thing. Um, this is super easy peasy. It's just a matter of at the top right here, clicking register and creating your own login. So that it, it's really that easy. So I'm just going to log in as me again, wherever I am. Please forgive my horrible, sad, unsafe password, which I keep meaning to change. Okay. So this is ULS once logged in. Now, um, there's some really great features here for you. Uh, like CCD, it's nice because there are locations and I'm just gonna go there right now. So under, under uh, United Library Services, just underneath says selection list in this little sub toolbar. I'm gonna click there. And what there are, are these lovely columns of compiled and curated lists that the experts at ULS have put together. So especially for schools, this can be invaluable. And the reason being is because there is curriculum-based material here. So there's Alberta science curriculum, so social studies, there's leveled um, books for guided reading, as you can see, there's novel sets, um, social and emotional learning, like it just goes on and on and on, as well as this K2, or, or K2. K to 12 school catalog, which I actually currently have on CCD is one of the selection lists as well. So sometimes there's a little bit of crossover. I do um, frequently take some of these lists that they've already curated. There's no point in me re reinventing the wheel. And I just upload them into CCD. So again, you don't have to go to two spots. It's all nicely in, in one and they are changed quite frequently. So, um, so these are a fantastic resource as are the children's and young adults. 
So they have a little bit of everything from um, award winners. So governor generals, I think everybody's probably familiar with those. Um, some of them are more thematic as in there's a BIPOC um, list of curated titles. There's an LGBTQ plus, there's uh, a list for on residential schools and so on, as well as um, top new titles. So a lot of the new releases, some of them may be out already, but some might be coming out in the coming months. And there's one for children's as well as young adult. Now, the other one that I really want, want to point out is the super forthcoming catalog. This is uh, a catalog that comes out every two months. So the newest one just came out for October. So for October and November, and that is also on CCD. We always list those on CCD um, because they are super popular. The discounts are at 35%, which is great. It's good to take advantage of that. Um, but the nice thing is we also separate them. Um, we break them down even further on CCD. So it's, it's less time to spend browsing, especially when you only have maybe half an hour to an hour a week to do this kind of thing, um, where it'll be a juvenile list, for example, and I'm just gonna open it here if it will open for me. No. I think it might be spinning behind my toolbar and I just can't see it. Hopefully it'll open. If not, I can go elsewhere. But basically um, it's also broken down here on their site as well. Is it gonna open? It might not open for me because of course I'm doing a presentation. <laughs> so that's when it's not gonna open. Oh, fair enough. Fine, fine. Um, but basically what it, what it has is two small little drop down menus. What the top one is for adult material. The second one is a drop down for all of the um, everything from toddlers to teens. And it will have uh, juvenile fiction and hardcover, juvenile fiction and softcover, um, board books, graphic novels, you name it. And it's for just about every age group, but they're broken up into um, uh, age group and format, as well as uh, not so much genre, but um, but it breaks it down a little bit more. So you're not looking through a list with 365 titles. So, but there's always amazing, amazing choices there. And again, the discounts are certainly worth checking out and browsing. <gasps> Voila, there it is. The, the heavens have opened. Okay, so here's those two little drop down menus I was talking about. So you can see one is adult, one is Juve and YA. So if I just click on it, you can see here there's Juve Fiction hardcover paperback, as I'd been mentioning. I tend to use soft cover. It's just the terminology we use here more often. Um, here's your picture books, hardcover and paperback. There's books and CDs still that you can get um, quite often as little kits, graphic novels, you name it. So everything here from toddlers to teens. And if you were to go on any of these particular sites, oh, thankfully it's gonna load. Okay, I'll just give you a small little taste of what it would look like. And a couple of things that you can kind of look out for as well on ULS, it is, an incredibly expansive catalog. Um, it's mind-blowingly big. Uh, for some reason, I've never really taken the time to look into why they do this, but uh, quite often there's a lot of titles that'll come up. So if you're doing a search for a title, a lot of hits will come up, but they'll be, um, maybe not in this because this is all new material, but there'll be uh, titles that come up that are actually no longer in print and they're displaying. And you might even be able to just technically add them to your cart, oddly. Um, and of course, we don't want to do that because I, I guarantee that that vendor is going to call us and say, um, hey, we can't get this, but did you want this instead? And then we have to go through process of, of substitution. So um, it's just a matter of a couple little tips and tricks to watch for, which I'm going to point out in a minute. But this is generally what the super forthcoming young adult fiction hardcover section looks like. There's 87 titles in this particular collection. And what it's going to show you is the title, the author. You can also see other um, works that they have uh, they've written. Um, what format this is in? It's ISBN. It's uh, month and year of publication. Gives you a little bit of uh, some tags or subjects as to what this is about. Now, a couple of things to really point out here. There's two different options of what you're going to see in this little square. So there's stocked items. So currently. ULS is, is by this, this little icon is, is indicating that this is stocked in their warehouse currently right now on their shelf. So if I was to order this, I'm probably going to get it in, in uh, as a very quick return. It's probably going to be here in YRL HQ within a week, maybe two. So, um, so that means it's going to get to you a little faster. Now, it's probably not going to show here, but I can show you um, 
because again, this is a brand new list. So these are all brand new titles, very likely that they're all going to be in their warehouse. But I'll show you an example of um, the alternative to this, which just means it's not in their warehouse currently, and it might take a little bit longer um, for it to make it to you. Not that much longer, but a little bit. So if it's something you needed really, really quickly, um, it, you might want to try and stick with stocked items. Now, the example that I was going to um, show you is my favorite go-to, and hopefully it'll load quickly. It's a big catalog and it's well utilized and loved. So it's sometimes a little slow, but we understand why. But basically what I'm gonna show you is things to watch out for when you're shopping on ULS. Things that you want to maybe stay away from. Okay, so here we go. So what I was looking for was um, this particular title right here. And you might recognize it, it's an adult title. Um, Black Leopard Red Wolf came out a, couple, um, a year or two ago. And um, this is the thing you wanna watch for. So one, see the special order box that's kind of in gray. That is the alternative I was talking to as opposed to the stocked item in black. So this is something that um, is not currently on their shelves in the warehouse at ULS. And you can see all of this, there's multiple different formats. Um, available for this title. And I'm going to, to explain um, why there's there's so many different hits for this, this one particular title. Now, the other thing you want to watch for is this. This is very deceptive. It says list price zero. So you're thinking, wow, sweet, it's free. It's not. Um, and you can add this to your cart. Uh, and people do, because why, why wouldn't you? You know, you, you just maybe haven't even noticed the price and you add it but what tends to happen is, is this is actually no longer available and they have maybe just not made it um, unavailable to add to your cart on their site yet for whatever reason. Um, so then ULS contacts us, the acquisitions team and says, hey, can't get this anymore. Would you like this as an alternative? And sometimes there's like a huge price difference. Um, so in that case, we have to contact the library and say, hey, there's a substitution request. Do you want the substitution or not? And then we have to, to go from there. So it just creates a bunch of extra steps. Is that a big deal? No, not at all. Um, but it sometimes can just slow down um, ever so slightly the material getting to you ultimately. So if it has a list price of zero, keep moving. <laughs> That's my best advice. Now you can see here that uh, it was 2020. This was in the trade paperback, Riverhead Books. Now I'm going to go down a little bit further. And here it is again, Black Leopard, Red Wolf, different ISBN, still in trade paperback. February 2020, so same year, but different publisher. This is Anchor Canada. And you can see that this actually has a price. So if I was gonna choose this particular title in trade paperback, this is the one that I would add to my cart, okay? Um, and you can see that uh, uh, there are multiple different formats. So there's sometimes it's gonna be large print, sometimes there's gonna be an unabridged audiobook CD edition, et cetera. Um, you really wanna watch for that format because you know if you're not paying attention to that and you add audiobook, but you really wanted the hardcover, then um, you're probably going to be contacting us to say, oops, uh, I really like to do a return, which again is also okay. We can do that. We can do just about anything. Um, but it, we just don't want to um, have any delay of you getting what you really, really wanted. So just a couple of small things to look for. And of course, the most important thing that I missed is how do you, how do you fill a card? How do you start it? What you want to do is go to the very top of the page and it says manage carts. We're going to click on that and we're going to create a new cart. So I'm just going to call this uh, session test, oops, or today, testy. Oh, it's, it's a testy cart, apparently. And once it is loaded down here, then you just actually click on it. And just to make sure that you're in the cart itself before you add things to it, it should display up here. There are currently no items, zero quantity, zero dollars. So I know that I'm technically in this cart. So anything that I select is gonna land in that, in that cart. So again, if I wanted to go to this Black Leopard, again, and add this to my cart, just so I can show you what to do from this point forward once you actually add a few things and once you've completed um, your search and you're ready to submit it, what to do. So again, look at those zero, zero dollars, zero dollars. So tempting, wanna add it to my cart, but I'm moving away. All right, so we're gonna, I'm gonna add that one. 
and it, see, it automatically pops up that now it is showing as quantity one in my session test cart. And again, if I want to change my mind, I can either um, change this to zero, or if I wanted to buy five copies, I could, and then update or just remove it altogether. And from there, I'm just gonna go back to our selection lists and I'm gonna to go to the ALA Youth Media Awards and pray that this is gonna open for me because I can't see my little wheel turning up at the top of the page. We're hoping for the best here. <laughs> How are we doing for time? All right, I still got time. All right, so here we go. So you can see with this one, even though it is a newish list, there are, it, a combination of, of two things. So items that are not currently in their warehouse, again, special order, but there might be, here we go. So fighting words is a stocked item. And you can see that there's actually a number of our libraries that have already ordered this particular title and many, they've all been shipped so far. So, so I'm gonna add one of those to my cart as well. And as you can see, it's just loading that item into my cart. And there it is, it's showing. So again, at the top, here's my cart. I have two items and currently at 62.51. So if you knew that you only had, you know, like $120 to spend, it's good to check up at the top periodically um, as to what your total is current or your balance is at. Now, if, if I was done at this point, um, I didn't want to add anything else. I'm happy with what I've got. I'm just going to go right back up here again and click on the link for that cart. And just like CCD, very similar, there's my two items that I have added. And again, the nice thing about this is I can see the breakdown. So it's listed at $23.99. The discount on this item is 37%. So fantastic, fantastic discounts. You can't beat that. So you're paying $15.11 for this, which is great. And that's for a hardcover. So, um, and again, for this one, it was uh, $79 for the CD um, unabridged audiobook. It's a 40% discount. Um, often 40% discounts usually only... Um, are available in hot list items, which is a really special list of pre-publication titles that come out um, three times a year. There's not usually very much, if any, um, kids material in there, but sometimes, especially if it's, if it's a, maybe a, a, the title is, 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 has been out for a couple of years and they're trying to um, get rid of stock, then they might um, increase the discount. So again, 40% is pretty sweet. So if, that, if I'm happy with all of this, and I can see I have two total items in my bottom summary here. Um, I've saved 4048, which is pretty sweet. Um, my total is, is 62.51. Of course, it's not going to cost um, anything for shipping. It's going to come to us. We're going to ship it to you. And again, that's all kind of covered in the fees that um, your school division pays for our services. And this is where I say stop. This is where you're not going to go any further. As tempting as it is to click that proceed to checkout button, don't do it. <laughs> what we recommend is, this is where you stop. You can make a record for yourself if you like. Um, some people like to print the cart and you can keep a paper copy of it for your records if you want to use it almost like a receiving sheet when you get the material back and kind of check it off as you go. Um, some people like to create an Excel spreadsheet of this particular cart and again, keep it for their own records. You can do either of those two things or both. That's totally up to you, but you do not want to proceed to checkout. Instead, this is where you email orders, um, or sorry, not orders, that, for, for, forget I said that. It's if you're a public library. Um, you wanna uh, either ask YRL, again, the common and you know one-time super fun email address that you can email us about anything for, ask YRL at yrl.ab.ca. And this is when you're gonna say, hi, this is um, so-and-so from Onaway Elementary. And I uh, have a cart that's ready to be purchased in ULS. I would like to use my allotment. Um, the cart is called Session Test or, you know, May Juvenile Fiction or whatever you've called it. So we know which one it is if you have multiple carts. Um, uh, what else do I need to know? My goodness, I'm blanking out. Um, I can't help you, Laura. That's all right. I think you got it though. Cart. What vendor? Oh, sorry. Most ID and thing. password. <laughs> yes. Thank yeah. you. Your login. Because it is your own personal login, um, uh, we don't have every single solitary person's login um, for every every person or every library. So you need to provide that to us. We need your login and your password. 
again, what, what fund you would like to use. So allotment, if you want to be billed directly for it um, and what the cart's name is. And then basically we will log in as you. We will go to this area here and download the MARC records. And then that's what we import into a purchase order in our um, operating system. And then we send that off to the vendor and, and place the order. So, so that's all you really need to do. So you're just filling a cart. You just go and shopping and then you're letting us know that it's ready to go and, and we do the rest. Um, there are a couple of other vendors that, that we use. I'm not gonna go into uh, the sites that, um, uh, that we use for them because when they're, they're uh, a little bit more, um, not complex, but um, involved, I think. And I'm not sure if you would really have a whole lot of need for them. One is CVS Midwest Tape. It basically is an audiovisual vendor. So they um, have Blu-rays, DVDs, playaways, um, uh, audiobooks on CD, that kind of thing, music CDs. So if you did have any of that kind of, of material that you were looking for, um, by all means, email us and let us know uh, what the title again is. And, you know, maybe it's a, uh, you want the, I don't know, the latest, you got a dance program coming up and you want the latest Lady Gaga. I don't know. She's maybe not the thing anymore. Um, Billie Eilish, you want Billie Eilish's new, new CD because you're having like a teen dance party or something. Let us know. We can order it from CVS Midwest Type tape for you. The other vendor is a video game vendor, which is, is uh, called Library Bound. And that's where we get most of our video games from. So if there was a video game that you wanted, again, just email us and let us know what the title of it is and what um, platform it's for. So is it Switch, Nintendo Switch? Is it um, PS4, et cetera? And then we can try and source that for you and, and get that for you as well. Laura, a good question just popped up. <gasps> that I, my, my initial answer was going to be I'm not sure but now I'm okay. not sure if I'm sure okay. the question is what about purchasing supplies with our allotments I'm looking for posters on certain things gotcha do, do we ever purchase that kind of stuff for libraries we do not okay uh, um a lot of the times like promotional materials will, will sometimes come in from from various different events and organizations like let's say um the one that I think just ended not too long ago was uh not Alberta Art Days. What is, it was very recently. It's it's completely escaped my mind. But if it, if, especially if it's anything connected to the government, quite often they produce a lot of um, promotional materials, like posters and that kind of thing. We will often ship those out to all of our um, whatever it's appropriate for. So if it if it's definitely geared towards schools, whether it's bookmarks. Um, little posters, big posters, brochures, that kind of thing. We'll just put them in your in your bin and the next van run, that, that kind of material will show up. But as far as purchasing materials like that goes, like promotional materials, no, um, we don't really offer that. And your allotment is really meant for um, your collection, your library collection. Um, previously, we used to actually kind of um, uh, deter people or our schools from ordering um, like class sets again, like for novel studies. Um, but in some cases, there's there's just you know there's allotment sitting there, and maybe you just you you've just recently done a, a big weed and a, um, you know you've purchased a bunch of new materials and there isn't anything else that you really wanted, but your teachers really need that novel study um, class set. Then you're more than welcome to use it for that. But it's really meant for for books or uh, materials for your collection. Is there any other questions that anyone can think of? I'm, that was I'm, all, that's really, all that was in the okay. chat. Um, oh. uh, Alicia said goodbye. She had to leave a little bit oh. She saw her name drop I, off. But I did not. No other questions. I, yeah. was, in, I was in the I zone. Had a, I had a, a question, though. Uh, um, this actually goes back to CCD. So I, what I really love about ULS is that it gives, shows me my discounts right away. And it's a really fair kind of helps right. me think ahead about whether or not I'm expending my budget. Yeah. But CCD doesn't always tell you the... No, um, the, the discount. So how yeah. do our, our libraries know what the discounts are if they're ordering through CCD? There's, there's two ways that you can find out. One, if you do have an, a ULS account, you can just log in and, and check because the ISBN is available um, just underneath the title and the author in CCD for that item. You could always just um, pop the uh, ISBN into the search field in ULS and, and just see what the actual discount is. If it says full discount underneath the list price, that generally means around 35%. That's kind of like their standard full discount. Um, the other option is you can always just contact us 
and uh, um, I, I know I am happy to look in uh, in ULS's catalog and, and let you know what that discount is. And I know that that can be um, uh, a little difficult to see again when when there is not a specific discount displayed in the CCD list. Um, you can see that there are some, however. So again, this is that super forthcoming list that I was talking about and the breakdown. So again, if I was looking for, um, so picture book titles, so October, November, picture book titles and hardcover, I can see that everything in this list is gonna be 35%. So you're guaranteed knowing as you're browsing through this particular list, everything in this, in this list is gonna be 35% off. Yeah. That's great, thank you. You know, when you're working with a tiny budget, those discounts make a big difference. right yeah, yeah absolutely absolutely so knowing what they are so you can yes. keep shopping it's yes. helpful yeah. and it's also important to mention that um you know it, it it's obviously not uncommon that you know sadly with um small smaller numbers of students or people you're going to have a smaller allotment budget so you know it, it could be like 125 dollars for the whole year um but you're you're planning on on spending more than that, and you've you know you've been given the go ahead to do that. Um, you can also go ever so slightly over your allotment. So again, let's say it was one hundred and twenty five dollars for the year, and you you know you spent one hundred and forty. Um, we're probably just going to leave that that slight deficit alone, and it'll, again it'll just carry over just like if you had a surplus, if you had um, a remaining balance, it's going to carry over the next year, and that'll just be subtracted from your next year's allotment. But again, if you wanted to go beyond that, and uh, you know you had the, the thumbs up from your your principal or whoever the um, school division, and they've told you yes, go ahead, just order however many more books. This is your budget, and then you can either order them for, uh, with Bill Direct, or you can send us in a check for additional allotment. So hopefully that's not what you're restricted to entirely, but I know what happens. Yeah, yeah, making you know using if you have additional funds, spending them through. The benefit of spending them through YRL is A, you get your processing all done, and then B, the discounts. Without a doubt, yes. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. yes. But that's pretty much all I had. And I know, it, for me, it doesn't feel like a lot, but I know for somebody that is new to these sites, um, it can be a lot. Um, but what I would recommend is, again, if you don't have a CCD login, and you, this is something that you think you might want to use, by all means, please contact, contact us at the Ask YRL email address, and we will set it up for you and let you know what it is. And then you can just play around with it, browse, ask questions. And same with ULS. If you don't have an account set up already, just set one up and play around with it, browse. And, and again, just don't hit proceed to checkout. But beyond that, like shop, have fun, see what you can find, and um, you might be surprised. And when you're all ready to go, just let us know and we'll submit it all. If you ever have any questions and you're unsure about what to spend the money on, again, just contact us. We're mm -hmm. happy to help you figure out what would be perfect for your collections. So right. and that's pretty much all I have today there, uh, folks. But thanks for coming. That's great. And I don't see any other questions in the chat. So all um, right. just to thank. So we'll, we'll sign off. Absolutely. Yeah. Contact us if you do, if you think about it later and have a wonderful day. All right. And a nice Thanksgiving. Bye. Bye.